Hi, I'm Ronnie Santmeyer, and today in the studio, we're going to talk about auto align with drum samples. This is kind of a part two to the one I just video I just made about auto align across drums and fixing phase issues. Um, when you're dealing with multiple microphones, you have phase problems sometimes. Um, and when you deal with samples, you're not really getting a phase problem because it's not a microphone, but you're still getting a, a shift in time um, and you have to line things up. Um, there's times where I literally go in and drop samples hit by hit because the part is busy or it's just sometimes a sample just clashes a little funny with the real drum and you get like a flam effect. And the only way I can feel like I can get that accurately is to manually place it. Other times I can easily just throw like Slate's trigger on and it just works. Um, and then there's other ways where I use Reaper's uh, gate and turn it into MIDI and fire Slate's drums or even Easy Drummer. It really all depends. And sometimes I just will use almost like a sampler, just drop a, a hit in. Today, we're just going to take a couple methods of how I might use it on like Slate's trigger and stuff. Um, I might show the Easy Drummer method also. Um, but this is about how auto align can help adjust the offset feeling of the sample and the real kick or real snare. So we're still in the same session that I did on part one, which I'm going to tag um, in this video. So you can watch that one on auto line if you haven't seen it yet. So what I generally like to do if I'm starting out, I mean, here's the drums with auto line on. Okay, well, I'll start with um, kick in and I'll just duplicate it. And I'll usually move it. Let's call it um, kick Sam. So I'm going to start off with turning that auto line off that we just copied. I haven't pre-planned any of this, so I'm just winging it like if I was mixing this song. Um, so let's start with trigger. Let's go to one of the that sounds. Jeff Giuliano's snares. Presets, trigger, and let's do, just do that one. Let's go back to triggers. Have to up the volume a bit. And I bring down the sensitivity a little bit so you see where these little lines right here go in between. Now I'm not, I may not find the perfect kick and the perfect snare for this example I'm showing because this is more about using the auto align against samples. Let me, let me try this. Let me turn this back on and see what the timing does. It's still kind of out. Trigger, because it has to look at the sample, has to do its thing, and then basically spit out a trigger, it, it's always a little off time to me. So let's try this then. We're just going to leave it at that for now. Actually, real quick, um, let me just go to somebody else's for one second. Um, I got Slate Trigger presets here. Let's try one of his deluxe. Um, direct. Let's clear that slot. I guess that kind of works because it almost sounds similar. Sort of. add a little room to it. Sometimes what I like to do too is go here on the curves and I'll turn off, uh, I mean turn on the link for the attack, sustain and release, dynamics and velocity. And I'm going to give it a little, a little more velocity. Pull the dynamic range back so it just has a little more punch to it. 
attack, probably I won't mess with, but the sustain, let me see if I can pull it. I just made that roomy on purpose because I want to make it stand out. So let me turn the volume down a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to put auto align behind that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the auto line that's um, on the kick drum in. We copied the kick drum in, that's what we're using for the sample. But when we did the drums in my other video, you saw that everything is looking at the overhead for timing except the snare drum, or I'm sorry, except the room stereo rooms are looking at the snare's top uh, for its source of timing instead of the overheads. And I'm going to do that now. Instead of telling the sample to look at the overheads, I need it to look at the other drum that it's following. So I'm going to tell it to look at the kick drum in. So I'm going to set the kick drum in to three. So we're going to go to three. So this is receiving three now. Get our levels about here like I always do and hit detect and let it run now hopefully you can hear that um, Hear how hollow it is? Now, I'm going to do another video about how I sometimes approach mixing drums. Um, the other day, when I did the other video, after I was done, I was kind of playing around with... Um, when I mixed this song before, I don't really recall. It was a while ago what I did. But I just decided to go with like an SSL flavor across the drums. And I have Waves, I have UAD, and I have Soft Tubes Console 1, and that's kind of what I threw across there really quick. Um, I'm not gonna go into detail on that yet, I'm gonna do another video on that, but I'm just gonna turn on the channel strips for right now for the, the kicks that I have. favoring the outside kick a little more on the on this kit the way that inside was sounding that particular day is a little more flappy sounding the solidness was coming from the bottom and a little bit of the all combined mics of course but so let's hear the sample now with the, that EQ on now if we turn that auto align off here's what that sample sounds like Samples off. It's out of phase, just like the drums were before. Put this back on. It's more solid. And again, you can nitpick this because you can find a better sample that you like that, you know, some samples might actually line up a little closer on their own anyway. Um, or just certain samples complement the sound better than others, obviously. Um, I'm going a little a little fast here, you know, more than I would if I was maybe mixing for real. But I'm just trying to show you how I go about it. So we're going to duplicate the snare track too, and let's call that snare stamp. So snare stamp. We're going to turn that auto line off, same as we did before. We're going to go down to even slate. Trigger. Okay. Okay, 
now. Let's for the sample. We're just going to kind of use the same thing. Make it easy. Go into uh, Slate's Deluxe. And it's a Black Beauty. Um, let's do this. Pull this down. I feel like I did that backwards this time. Let me do that here. And that one here. Or actually, let me go to this one. So it's a little more like the way the kick drum was. Same thing, let's go to the curves. You hear the velocity makes it sound like it's uh, being hit a little harder. Cool thing about this, this gate actually works really good. You can use this gate on a track, even if you're not using the sample, just, just for the gate. Making it cut off like that helps the, the sample just hit and then the sample rings. So we'll do this a little backwards this time. Um, so here's the, the raw top and bottom. Now I'm gonna put the uh, soft tube console one's SSL 4000 EQ on it. This is the interface for the console one. Top's a little break too. It's it sounded more bright because it's soloed, but in the track, it's adding the definition. The roundness is coming from the kick shell and the overheads and the rooms and all that stuff that I have. Okay, so now what we're going to do here, I'm just going to tell it to follow too. A little roll. It's lighting up and it's doing its thing, it's calculating. And I mentioned in the other video, sometimes some things take longer to, de to detect. Sometimes it's room mics, sometimes it's samples. Now let's see if that works. Yeah, that's, try to ignore the ring. That's a little more hollow sounding. And real quick, let me just do this. Since we're turning this on, let me turn on the console one and everything. Um, in this instance, I actually used SSL's legacy version, um, SSL on just the tom, rack tom and floor tom. I'm going to turn the sample up a little bit loud so I can hear it and yeah, I feel the bottom as soon as I flip it. Now I'm gonna, I'm kind of gonna exaggerate this room a little bit. Um, hold on. Just 
just so we're really hearing, and I'm gonna pull the direct sound down actually, so it's almost like we're using this. So we're almost using like a reverb. I'm only doing this just because I wanna really see how it sits with the other drums. Okay, so. Flip the phase at a kick sample while we're playing. So let's do. Let's go up here. We'll hear how it hollows out. Okay, so that's a quick one with trigger on there. So let's do another example really fast, if I can. Is I'm gonna go to Kako's folder, which is Reaper's built-in plugins, and call up their regate. Easy thing to do is hit gate kick. Uh, Now you need to do is kind of fire. About like that. And you make it, you make it, you know, dead. So there's no volume, no, no output dry or wet because we're using it not as an audio device, but a MIDI device at this point. It's turning, um, let me come back to that so I can show you because I didn't show you that. If you're using it as a normal gate, obviously you want it to be wet. So this is gonna be up here. But when you enable this send MIDI to open and close notes, so as it opens and closes, it's creating a note on 36 channel one. And 36 is where kick drums sit in most MIDI programs. Let's go big rock drums, which is the rival sons drums. See that? So that gate is triggering that kick drum. Let's see how well it works with. Yeah, it's a little hollow, just a little bit. So let's put this auto line back down here again. It's already looking at the drum, but let's have it detect again because it's, it's reading something different. So it needs it to be detected. So it's flipping the phase and it's adjusting its uh, samples. Shift it off just move along kind of quickly we'll, let's do the gate we'll just copy that over here and we're just going to go up 
and just tell it to read the snare. And we're going to make that wet so we can hear it. Snare can be trickier, obviously, because there's ghost notes and all kind of stuff. So in a scenario like this, I'm not looking to replace the entire snare and get every little tiny hit because it's too unrealistic sounding sometimes. So I find it easier just to um, let it have the main meat of the sound and let the real drum do all the busy stuff. So I just copied this um, Easy Drummer over to make it easy so we're on the same kit. Let me turn that kick drum off and I'm just going to enable, I don't remember what's... Let me just try that one. Let me go with the deeper snare for a second and see if it stands out. tough one to hear phase wise so let's just let's let it do its magic So right there is a little in between this and there's a little bit of a hollowness. That makes the top have a little more smack to it for some reason, so. Those samples sound cool. Well, the Rival Sun drums are awesome, but they sound cool in this. So here's without those samples. as easy as that so and sometimes I'll EQ the drums um, of the samples but easy drummer did a lot of work to make these things sound good and sometimes you still have to sculpt them to fit your sound it's hard to tell right now because I'm not sitting with a bass and a guitar and having us you know music around these drums it's just the drums so but, but right now just Raw, just sitting with the drums that are EQ, they sound really good. And I can do the same thing with the slate uh, drums too. Um, let me go in here. Just putting a little more room. rumble but well, that's it for how I'm using auto align to line up drum samples when you need to augment some drums um, thanks for checking out the video please subscribe I'm gonna try to get more videos put out quicker leave a comment if there's something that uh, you need to ask about or um, you'd like to see me do a video on. Give me some ideas. Thanks for watching.